Our scripture le lesson today is Luke 6, uh, verse 27 through 36. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, that what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those whom... Or, if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. This is the Word of God. So we are in the midst of a sermon series on different ways of looking at atonement. Atonement being what makes us right with God. What makes us at one with other people and with God. So two weeks ago, we talked about the ransom theory. The ransom theory, and then, which is also called the classical theory, and then last week, we talked about penal substitution. And both of these theories involve a heavy understanding of original sin. With ransom theory, it's that we were sold to the devil through Adam's actions with the fall in the garden. And that God sent Jesus to die on the cross to have justice, for Jesus to pay the debt, the ransom, for us so that we could be liberated free from the devil and instead be gods. Well, the penal substitution theory came long after that and original sin changed so that it was that when Adam fell, when it was the fall from the garden, it changed our human nation, nature so that we could not do what was good. And we continue doing what was wrong. And so God needed to have someone pay for those sins. And so it was a God of anger, a God of wrath, needing the punishment. And yet a merciful God did not want to take the wrath out on the people. And so God sent Jesus to die in our stead to have our punishment on the cross. Penal substitution, theory of atonement. Well, today's is not like that. <laughs> today's theory is the idea of moral influence. And this is a very early theory. However, if you look on the internet and you do a Google search on moral influence theory, you will find that there are are some Christians, usually Protestant Christians, more conservative, who say, oh no, the moral influence did not start until about the 12th century with Abelard. Well, when you hear that, you know already that these are people who follow the penal substitution theory and who do not like the moral influence theory. And they read back into the scriptures their, their idea of atonement theory and they ignore that the early church leaders, fathers and mothers, followed moral influence. And so always read those Go ahead and read those kind of sites, but be aware when you're reading them. Well, 
There's not a need to understand original sin in this theory, moral influence theory. Instead of coming to save us from the devil, coming to save us from God's wrath, Jesus came to save us from ourselves. Because we are not, we, we have free will. Or some of you who are raised in LDS neighborhoods, free agency. We have free will. And just being human, we tend to choose what's not good for us. We tend to choose the bad. And because Jesus' teachings were telling us, you know, let go of those natural instincts. You don't have to protect yourself all the time. And you don't have to get revenge. You can have peace. You taught a different way. And so Jesus is our rabbi, our teacher, and our example. And he challenges us to this new way, new way of living, a life of love. And that we are truly capable of change. We are to live as Jesus lived. All of the teachings that we've sung about today and that we've read in Scripture. And our goal is one that Methodists are pretty comfortable with and we understand. Our goal is unselfish love of other people. Being willing to take up our cross and follow Jesus. So when Jesus died on the cross, it was not that he died to ransom us, not that he died for the punishment. Jesus chose to go to the cross with this theory because he was standing up against the evil, the evil corporations, the evil empire of the day. He was standing up to Rome and the oppression that was there. He was standing up to the religious authorities who were cooperating with Rome and twisting the religion. He was crucified for his incredible radical love and his incredible acceptance of all people eating with sinners, things that made the status quo un, unhappy. And so Jesus, in this theory, died as a martyr. And he tells us to pick up our crosses and to follow and to even be willing to risk our lives by placing other people first. We are to take up our crosses. Sometimes people have said, well, how does that make us, you know, Jesus, any different than other martyrs? There have been other people who have been martyred. There's a big difference. I am always so sad to find out that great people that I have put up on a pedestal Gandhi. You know, these wonderful people who've done so much. They were so human. And I'm always disappointed to find out that they truly weren't perfect. And it's easy to be disillusioned by aspects of their lives. And as a woman, I'm probably pretty sensitive to that because with so many of them, it's their relationship with women that makes it hard to continue to admire them so greatly. For me, I'm never disappointed by Jesus. I don't have to be worried about being disillusioned by Jesus. And so the resurrection with this kind of theory, moral influence theory, was proof that an atonement occurred. Even more than that, that Jesus, by dying on the cross as a martyr, was saying a huge no to the evil of the day, the entities, and God was saying a huge 
yes to his son, that evil will never have the last word. Well, Clement, in last week, we had St. Clement's cross, one of the early church leaders, and he combined the ransom theory with moral influence theory. He said, for Christ came down, for this he assumed human nature, for this he willingly endured the sufferings of humanity, that being reduced to the measure of our weakness, he might raise us to the measure of his power. And just before he poured out his offering, when he gave himself as a ransom, he left us a New Testament. I give you my love. What is the nature and extent of this love? For each of us, he laid down his life, the life which was worth the whole universe. And he requires in return that we should do the same for each other. Well, Abelard did have a large influence on on the moral influence theory. And it wasn't that he started the moral influence theory, but he did not like the penal substitution theory that came much later, and so he spoke up against it. And he said, we are joined through his grace to him and our neighbor by an unbreakable bond of love. Our redemption through the suffering of Christ is that deeper love within us, which not only frees us from slavery to sin, but also secures for us the true liberty of the children of God, in order that we might do all things out of love rather than out of fear. Love for him who has shown us such grace that no greater can be found. Positives. What are the positives with this theory? The first is that it is not a God of wrath. It is a God of love. Very loving. It's a positive that... We do not have to believe in the literal creation and fall story. We can read it as a metaphor, and this is not dependent on original sin, whichever version you might might like. It matches John Wesley's theology, because what is the goal, not only of this theory, but what's the goal for all of us as United Methodists? Perfection in love. And that's what the moral influence theory leads us to. Perfection in love. And the other theories concentrate. In fact, you can be saved without, without knowing any of Jesus' teachings. But with this theory, it encompasses all of Jesus' life and his teachings, as well as the death and resurrection. This is not a passive theory. This moral influence theory, we are the ones who change. We change through the love of God. With the other theories, it's been that God is the one who has changed. God, with the, with the penal substitution theory especially, God wanted to do wrath. And so it was, God was able to look at us differently through the sacrifice so that God no longer wanted to punish. God is the one who changes with the other theories. We, our hearts are changed through this theory. Which means that God is constant with this theory. God is a God of love. God is not vacillating between anger and love and all of that. This theory is inclusive because who did Jesus show love to? Everyone. Who are we called to love if we follow him? Everyone. And in this theory, we are partners with God to care for all of creation and to care for all of God's people, meaning everyone. What other positives do you see with this moral influence? Corey? The promise, yes, that atonement did occur. 
promise of eternal life. Anyone else? So what could the negatives be with this? Oops. Do you want to do it, Greg? Mine just didn't work well. The next slide. So, some people view this as having low Christology. Because they say, well, we can follow the teachings, but we don't even have to believe that Jesus is divine, that Jesus is God. That could be, but many of us who follow Jesus' teachings also believe that Jesus is divine. It downplays the cross for some people because it's not all based on the cross. It's based, the cross has a part of it, but it's based on Jesus' life also. And for some who they want to, they follow that the cross is everything, that would not be a positive. It could be seen as a moralistic or a political message because Jesus, believe it or not, he spoke up against authorities. And he could be seen as political. He was political in his day. And so, when we follow Jesus, it means that we not only do acts of mercy, we seek out acts of justice that we can do, as Jesus did. Some people say that this is works righteousness, that we are earning our way to Jesus. And... Some people do not like it that moral, moral influence makes demands on us. We have to change if we believe moral influence theory. It could be said on the positive side that this theory is so empowering. But on the negative side, if you don't want to be empowered, you can't just accept the love of God. You have to act on that love. And it's sort of like doing dishes. As soon as you finish the dishes, what happens? There are more dirty dishes in the sink. We're never done with this. It's not like once saved, always saved. Jesus died for your sins in the past, died for your sins in the future. This is, oh, you mean we constantly have to work on it and we fix one problem and another one arises? And we are the ones, we are still responsible we can't get away from our responsibility. So today, we see this in progressive mainline Protestants. We see it in this church. What is our mission statement? To live the teachings of Jesus as we share God's unconditional love. We see it with Catholics and Unitarian Universalists, the Eastern Church, post-Holocaust theology, because this helps explain why didn't God intervene and rescue the Jewish people and the, the gays, and the, why didn't the Armenians get saved from their genocide, all of, all of the ethnic cleansings today? Where is God? Where is God with this theory? Within us, telling us to do something. God intervenes through our actions. And the Heifer Project, giving money and that money being used to improve the lives around the world of people is based on this. We see it in the movies with Schindler's List and with, oh, one of my favorites, which is very violent. Again, I'm so sorry, but it's a great movie, great message. Hacksaw Ridge of a pacifist in World War II, Okinawa, who saved by himself 75 people. A pacifist. And through the night as he's saving not only Americans, but even Japanese, he kept saying, please, Lord, help me get one more. Help me get one more as his hands were raw and as he did this. And we see it with Pay It Forward. How that movie, this expression didn't start with that, but how it became popularized with this, doing good. And so what this is about is, it is for us with moral influence theory to see people with the eyes of God. It changes who we are. So what is it that you believe? Again, most people do not believe just one way of atonement. Most of us are a mixture of different theories. 
And next week you'll hear yet another one, a twist on this one the, from the Gospel of John. I would rather have questions that can't be answered than answers that can't be questioned. It's always okay to answer, to ask questions of your faith. Amen. So go to live the teachings of Jesus as you share God's unconditional love. Amen.